the, the, the moment in time that I felt, oh, this is a place that I can thrive is when people recognized my skill and were able to articulate it to me and say, you know, we, I, we, we see you and we hear your points of view and they're interesting and they're unique and we value your difference. We value the fact that you're different to us. Hello, my name is Associate Professor Nada Hamad. I'm a Senior Staff Specialist Hematologist at St. Vincent's Hospital in Sydney. My main interests are in blood cancers and transplantation and cell therapies, and I'm the Director of Clinical Trials in Hematology here too. I was naturally inquisitive as a child, and I had a love of biology, I don't know why. My parents were all artists and for some reason I was the anomaly and I just loved science, I loved learning um, and I really loved helping people. Women graduating from medical schools, you know, there's the predominance of females now um, in many, many specialties. There's a predominance of females in the training programs and even graduating, yet we're not seeing that transition into leadership. I think it's very difficult in medicine because, you know, rising to leadership is, is very slow uh, in general and it, it's very stagnant. There's no change over in leadership. Um, you know, tenured positions mean that, you know, you're in a position for life and so, you know, leadership doesn't necessarily change. Having said that, you know, recognizing what is a good leader has metrics surrounded in medicine that are quite antiquated um, and people hire people look, that look like them. So the more women you have, the more likely you get more women in your department, in your team, in your hospital. The places that I felt that I was thriving as a clinician, as a researcher, and as a leader were those places where what I brought to the table was valued and what I brought was a different perspective, a different viewpoint. So, you know, my thoughts around how do we encourage women to move into um, spaces that they're not usually in is to welcome them actively and be deliberate in bringing women into those rooms. And most of the decisions we make in health from a public health policy, from a local um, health sector policy impact everyone. So if there isn't representation from the various people impacted by the decisions, we're probably doing a disservice to a very big part of the population we're serving. I would say be prepared to face a level of bias at some point in your career. Don't fear it. Um, the world needs women, especially women of diverse backgrounds, in rooms that make decisions. It's the best thing for patients. It's the best thing for the world. We need you to take up space. And when you feel like you don't belong, that's the time to make sure you belong. Make yourself belong. Push those barriers. Don't be afraid because what is at risk may be some personal social risk and some personal career risk that is definitely there. But the risk to the public and the, wild, the wider community and humanity in general is much greater.